What's up, traders? This is Matt with Conservative Trades. Boy, what a day. And you know what? I've got one word for this market right now. One word. Crazy. C-R-A-Z-Y. This market is crazy. I'm telling you, it is. It, this market is bipolar. This market is bipolar. We thought that we thought today was actually going to end uh, with another green candle. This is a daily chart here on the SPY. We thought this was going to be a green candle. One, one of our guys called it out in the live stream, and I looked at it, and I said, you know what, man? You might be right. But then look what happened. Here's a five-minute chart. We were coming up happy, chugging along all day long. And then what happens? Sell-off. Huge sell-off. This is this this has done this. This has done this very consistently. I mean, look at this. Look at the spy. Look at this. Buy up, sell off, buy up, sell off, gap down, buy up, sell off. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's becoming very, very difficult to read it. But I tell you what, guys, I'm just happy that I am ending the day up to hundred and twenty five dollars and forty three cents now for those of you who are in the live stream I think I was up two hundred and twenty two dollars last time when we last left left off in the live stream I actually did take one more scalping trade attempt I should say on ZM and basically got out break even I mean I made, I made three bucks okay I paid for the trade and bought a Snickers bar okay but you know I wanted to take another stab at it the spy was tanking and ZM seemed to be following suit, but it just kind of teetered around these levels and started to show a bit of divergence from the SPY. So I went ahead and just, like I said, just got out basically break even. But guys, I'm just glad to be ending with another green day. It's just good to tack on another green day. It really is because this this market has just slapped me in the face way too month or way too much lately. Now I am still red on the week, but guess what? I am green on the month. I'm still green on the month. The beginning of March was much better for me, and I did really, really well at the beginning, and so that that really has saved saved my butt, basically, uh, for lack of a better phrase. But um, I'm not I'm not green on the month by much, but I am still green on the month, and I think that with the few trading days that we have le left next week, I think if we continue to approach the market a lot more safely, a lot more practically, and and with with I think even less risk, and just with a little little more of a calculative strategy, I think that we can pull this month off still ending pretty decent in the green. So that's going to be my goal. That's going to be my goal. And so what's that going to look like? Well, I know I told you guys that, you know, I'm, f first of all, I'm not going to take any pre-market trades unless it's just an undeniable uh, A-quality setup. Okay, and unless I can take it with a really, con really extra conservative share size, extra conserv conservative share size, and with a very, very, very tight stop. And I actually did that this morning on BKYI. And I'll pull it up here for you just so you can see. I've seen this move more times than I can count. Where you come into the market, pre-market, and it's just really been bought up like this. And it comes down and it makes an attempt to come up, but then it gets slammed down. And then here, it came down, it broke all these levels here, came down, but then got bought up and it started sitting on the 9 EMA. And if you notice, each of these five minute candles, the low, you know, could not break the, the previous five minute candle low. And so here I thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to get in and I'm just going to take 200 shares. You can see here on my orders, all I took was 200 shares. Normally I would take four or 500 shares, but I took just 200 shares and I said, I'll just get out. If it finally breaks a five minute low, there are so many times I've come into the market and these, these small cap, low float runners, this is what they'll do. They'll pop up a couple times, pop up. They'll look like they're going to sell off and then they'll get bought back up, ride that EMA and then end up just going to the moon. OK, and so I was risking at this point roughly, I don't know, I was risking probably 20 bucks to make 150. I mean, it was a very good risk to reward, OK, on those 200 shares. And, and, and you know what? If it broke out and was really strong, I might have even added back to my position. So I don't know that in my mind, it, it could have been a maybe even a two to three hundred dollar move, just depending on how it played out. But I started here with a super conservative share size. But when it popped up here. And it couldn't go any higher. I started to look at this as, as a as a as a um, descending trend line here, and I thought to myself, you know what, I'm just going to get out, and and we'll see what it does when the market opens. And so I got out, and and really only just took a six dollar loss. So I will continue to exercise that strategy. That's the only pre market trade that I took, and it's because it was a setup that I've seen literally a hundred times, and I I could say eight times out of ten, it usually works out pretty well. Okay, so that's the only reason I took it, but. I stuck to my rules, took extra conservative share size, you know, didn't size in big, had a very tight stop, wasn't risking much at all. Okay. And I'm going to continue to do that. So basically no pre-market trades unless I see something like this. Okay. And the other thing is, is no trading at the market open. And when I say the market open, I mean the first five minutes, no trading at all, unless, unless I take extra conservative share size in the setup 
has to look good. Okay, and I did that on Uber, as you can see, and Uber just completely snapped back on me. You can see the setup was pretty good, and there was a big sell-off in the market during this time, right? And it was just breaking through some, some, some key levels, and it broke through VWAP. And so I took it, but just with super small share size, got a late fill on it. I'll admit, I did get a late fill on it. Um, but then when it, as it was snapping back like this, I just had to get out. And I'm glad I did, because it ended up coming all the way up here, and I, I wouldn't have wanted to, to hold through that. But you know what? I only lost $40 on it, okay? It wasn't, it wasn't like I lost, you know, 150 bucks on it, okay? Like, like Boeing the other day. But just lost 40 bucks on it. Took an extra conservative share size. And, you know, but I, I, I gave it a shot. But this is how I'm going to continue. I'm basically going to continue trading just like this. Pretty much no pre-market trades and no market open trades. No trades in the first five minutes unless they are super conservative share size and if it's a, if it's a very good solid setup, okay? And... That's, you know, so, so I took those trades, but look, I mean, altogether, we're talking about a $50 loss. We're talking about a $50 loss taking, taking those types of trades, okay? And these trades easily could have worked out in my, in, in my favor. Again, BKYI, I've seen setups like that that eight times out of 10 work, at least seven, seven times out of 10, okay? I mean, the odds were very favorable. And with Uber, you know, breaking back down through these levels and it was breaking daily levels, it just looked like it was gonna go, okay? But the main point is, sticking to conservative share size and cutting your losses quickly okay i think we just have to continue to do that in this market and so that's what i'm going to be doing but another thing that i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be very watchful for stocks that are showing divergence from the spy because i've noticed and you know ual is a perfect example and this is the biggest trade of the day for me today and i was actually up a little bit more than that i ended up taking uh one more stab at it here and then had to get out you know with a little bit of a loss but um and and, and mind you this actually i took this closer to 940 and so the the market had been open for almost 10 minutes and i actually should have gone in with double the share size but i'll tell you what this market has slapped me in the face so many times that i've noticed that my conservative share sizes have really become extra conservative share like we ought to we ought to just call the, this channel extra conservative trades <laughs> for at least the, maybe for at least the next month or two while while we're fleshing all this out with the market maybe maybe this channel should be called extra conservative trades um, I don't know guys, but I, I, I should have easily, I took 200 shares short on this and I really should have gone in 400 shares short. This should easily be a $250 win here. Um, but it was showing some divergence from the SPY. Okay. And so typically when I notice divergence from the SPY, that tells me that those stocks are going to play out more according to what the chart is showing you than, than, than other stocks that are pretty much just moving and doing exactly what the SPY is doing. Okay. And so that's another thing. I'm going to continue to keep some stocks on watch that are moving with a little bit of divergence from the SPY. Um, and then another thing that we were talking about in the live stream today was some of these scalping techniques and, and how we, th this, this would be a really good time just with all this choppiness in the market to really identify very calculated areas where we can get in and make quick little scalps, just quick little scalps with all this back and forth movement. I mean, guys, stocks have been doing this, stocks have been doing this all week long. And for the past several weeks, weeks really. I mean, they've been just choppy, just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I think if it continues, now obviously we we get some of these run-ups like this. And, and this and this is the part that this is the part that you have to be careful of. And this is why you do need to watch the spy. You know, even though there was divergence with UAL early in the day, the, it eventually did start following the spy a lot more to the T. And the spy had some massive buy up here. And I don't know if just money's being more money's being injected in the market or whatever. But when spy did this. Even, even stocks that had been moving against the SPY a little bit just followed suit. I mean, something just something crazy happened here. But other than moves like this, stocks have just been steadily going back and forth through the day. I mean, they really have. ZM was another one. I mean, I got all kinds of good little scalps in on ZM because of this, you know, this moving back and forth. And, and what I do is I'll typically come in with maybe like one-fourth the share size that I normally would, just in case it does continue to move against me a little bit more, and then I can add into it and still not be stressed out feeling like oh man i'm going to take a big loss here i mean zm is the perfect is the perfect one that we could talk about you know if you take 25 shares here 25 shares here 25 shares here and then you get this drop you get a drop on 75 shares you've moved your average all the way up to here you know and you'll you'll make a good quick 40 50 bucks maybe so um those are those are definitely definitely things to consider guys i think as we're moving forward in in these 
in these crazy, crazy times, I just think that um, I just think we need to be really mindful of this stuff. I really do. And and I think exercising safer and even more conservative trading strategies, you know, such as trying to sit on your hands during pre-market, not take pre-market trades and not even trade the market open, even though you might be feeling the FOMO and you feel like you're going to miss the bigger move, but just letting these chart patterns play out a little longer and then and then going in with them with a little bit more of a conservative share size than what you normally would. I think I think if we continue to do this, we'll continue to end in the green. And when I say we, I, I mean, I can only speak for myself, but I know that there's been a lot of other guys in, in the live stream that have, have uh, really benefited from taking more of a conservative approach to the markets. And so anyway, this, this, is, this is what I think I'm going to do moving forward. And for those of you who are new to the channel, consider liking, subscribe, and please know that you are invited into our live stream. We have a great community of traders, um, a lot of guys that, that bring a lot of value to the channel. It's not just me. I mean, these guys, um, these guys are, are making some pretty good calls throughout the day, and um, some of these guys are even tweaking their scanners. And, and so it's, it's pretty exciting what's going on right now. But we do trade live right here on the channel. It's, it's free. I don't have a website. I don't have a chat room or subscription that you have to pay for or anything like that. It's right here on the channel starting at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Monday through Friday. Um, so come join us. And uh, guys, have a great weekend. I will try to get up a new episode of The Trader's Mind and talk about where we may be going with this market. So I'm going to try to get that up this weekend. And, and not just where we may be going with this market, but how we might need to adjust our mindset and even our trading strategies as we start to trade a, a market um, during a recession. And, and, and we may be in a little bit of a recession here for a while, guys. So um, anyway, I'm going to try to maybe get that up this weekend if I can. Uh, I've got so many ideas for other episodes with the trader's mind. There, there, there's, a, there's a lot that I want to cover out there. But I think I'm going to put some of that stuff on hold for now because I think the, there, are, there are much more important things we need to address much more urgent matters here that we're facing that I think um, where I think that the trader psychology of it all is is going to be, I think, I think it's just, it's going to be critical to tackle some of that in these moments. So anyway, guys, hope y'all have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. Take care.